So my name is uh, Don Burden, and uh, my, uh, my study was Effects of Mindfulness on Children with Autistic Spectrum Condition. I'm going to give you a little insight into how I got into mindfulness, and then I'll read a little excerpt uh, from uh, part of the chapter uh, on uh, the study itself. So for 10 years, um, I worked at a special needs school in the UK where we developed a self-awareness program based on the MSc in Mindfulness Studies program. I currently teach biology at a sixth form college, and the other thing we're doing right now is trying to work with students and staff in moving uh, the college towards ecological sustainability. As the stars aligned, so too did my journey into mindfulness and working with children with autistic spectrum condition. Early formative experiences came together about 15 years ago when my eldest son was invited to visit Samuel Monastery as part of a school trip. When asked about his experience, he remarked something to the effect that spending an hour meditating was a complete waste of time, particularly when it could be used to play football. <laughs> Intended or not, his reverse psychology worked and my curiosity was piqued. It wasn't long afterwards that I started attending courses in various aspects of meditation, leading into forming the first, and by all accounts, rather challenging cohort of students who participated in the MSc Mindfulness program started in 2010. Coinciding with my growing interest in mindfulness, I was appointed to teach science at a special needs school in the UK. Around 70% of those students had a di diagnosis of autistic spectrum condition. Teaching special needs was new territory. Indeed, my first day jitters were not helped much by being confronted by a very tall and direct student who looked me up and down in the school yard and after considerable inspection stated, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> It proved an important lesson in maintaining equanimity and a sense of humor. We became friends and I taught at the school for 10 years. The, stu the study itself that's uh, in the chapter uh, was looking at to assess whether training in mindfulness enhanced the ability of students to first of all act with awareness and secondly to accept internal experiences without judgment, two of the hallmarks of mindfulness practice. I'll say a little bit more about accepting uh, internal experiences without judgment in a minute. Results following a mindfulness intervention showed that within key stage three, which is students from 11 to 14 years of age, the number of students showing an increase in score was almost twice those showing a decrease. While the numbers showing increase and decrease were roughly the same in the key stage four group, which is 14 to 16 years of age. Interviews were then conducted with a number of the key stage four students to understand what was going on. And I'll read a little ex excerpt from the chapter about the, sort of, um, the uh, managing difficult thoughts and non-judging non uh, experience. Insofar as managing difficult thoughts and emotions are concerned, the students interviewed were at various stages of letting these let go and being able to respond with varying degrees of perspective and spaciousness. One student mentioned that he felt there was more stuff going on now and that he felt the need to channel the energy constructively for example, by hitting the gym if in a bad mood. He further remarked that he wasn't keeping so busy as to block thoughts and emotions, but rather finding constructive outlets while still being aware of their presence. While many of these strategies may be tinged with judgment, what was impressive was the ability of those students to demonstrate an ability to relate to internal experiences in more expansive and constructive ways along with an ability to express such emotions in increasingly beneficial ways. The study then uh, also looks at the whole notion of the, the uh, awareness and uh, the uh, non-judgmental uh, relation to things. And also the thing about uh, the study itself you'll see in the chapter is, is the use of self-assessment frameworks comes under scrutiny as to being the most effective ways in terms of measuring mindfulness interventions.